Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. You guys are going to have a interesting thoughts tonight that I'll leave you with. And let's get right into it. I have drawn this up a while back. And there's Ed's wheel. And there's my cones, there's a crystal, there's capacitors. And you can see that they are rotating their field, they're oscillating and flipping their poles. So are these capacitors. And right here, we're showing Ed's wheel, which uh, Ed's PMHs. And I believe this is how Ed floated, so-called, or levitated the rocks. Crystal basically is a rock. And here is victim number one. This is a rock. It's coral rock, and it's got crystal in it. There's the crystals growing right out of the rock. So we are going to take a crystal which right here I have a crystal ball, quartz crystal. On this quartz crystal, I'm going to try round first. So it isolates the energy into its center. I have a copper flattened out quarter inch tube as a copper band on both sides, separate it. I got them connected to a transformer. That is a high voltage, 15,000 volt, 60 milliamp. <laughs> so, we have a couple things going on here. Um, so coming out of the transformer, which basically we are just skipping Ed's wheel right now and jumping a little bit forward and Ed's wheel with the coils become the transformer action that Ed was using. And we're going to step it up. And he was able to step it up with the old-fashioned buzz coils. This is the uh, front end of a Model T Ford buzz um, set of points here. Points make contact. What happens what, is that this uh, coil, this is a uh, make and break pretty much. This is a bifiler, but it don't need to be a bifiler. It could be a single filer. But when the two ends of the single wire is connected to a battery, it'll produce a magnetic field. When the magnetic field pulls away the connection, the field collapses. And then, therefore, the um, um, attraction to this metal to the iron core in here uh, is released because of the saturation and loss and um, makes a connection again, builds a magnetic field. When the magnetic field is strong enough to pull this back, it'll make its own quick release. It's pretty unique, but that's how the buzz coils were designed. So we're going to replace some of this with a little bit stepping it up. Uh, this is a Dr. Korsky experiment done in 1917, and he was trying to utilize um, a crystal, quartz crystal, to make a solid, stable frequency, and which he did. And then uh, 1928, there was another experiment done with the same technique as Dr. Korsky, 1927. And that's funny, that's the year Ed moved into his second location. And that experiment was done and they decided to introduce um, um, high tension 
um, uh, high currents, high high frequency, high tension, magnetic field. So this has to swap, but how's it swapping? So we're coming out of, this is AC, 110 coming into 15,000 volts coming out. And we're going into uh, these capacitors. Now let's get into the details here, the nitty gritty guys. So these are uh, 21,000 volt, okay, each one of these, I call them cherry bombs. They are 1500 microfarads, which that makes them one and a half nanofarads. We got four, so that makes six nanofarads, which equals, one nanofarad equals a beer bottle in capacitance. Okay, and the max is 21,000 volts, and that covers us for spikes. This is 15,000. So that means on the 21,000 volts, that means we're only filling up 15,000. So we're only probably getting about 60, 68 to 72 percent filled, which is perfect. Tesla always said you, you got to leave some so you don't burn out the, the capacitance. So we're a little bit under that margin. I like that. That's a good thing to do. And we're coming out of here into the capacitance, coming out of the capacitance into a spark gap. And um, the, oh, heck, shit. The spark gap, and that makes the electromagnetic, uh, this makes a, um, a swapping magnetic field because every time um, there's a release, because uh, these are swapping their poles, there's a center tap in the transformer action that is a current limiter, 60 uh, milliamp of amperage, 15,000 volts. And when one side is a positive, the other side is on the, the downslope, which of the, um, uh, the, the oscilloscope, so it would be the negative. So they're swapping. So that means that these up top is rotating. So it's positive and negative. And that's what we want. Because the goal here, see, that's what I was saying. Oh, shit. I don't want that stuck. So I'm going to have to somehow, just, oh, there we go. All right. So what we're going to do here is, and this is weighted. Okay. So right now there's a magnet. We're going to, let's add some weight to it. These are just iron pieces here that made a lot of damage. So here's the rock. It's got crystals growing out of it. I found it in my sand. It's amazing. It shows me that um, Shows me that rock transformation crystal. It's a rock's vibratorial pouch, I would say. So we're back to the crystal here. So we're weighted now. I put enough weight on there. So we're just going to hover around here. Right, let's make sure that we separate. I want enough capacitance in these plates. So we'll get into that also. Okay, so we talked about the transformer action, okay? Which is gonna replace Ed's wheel for right this experiment. Okay, 15,000 volts transformer going into four, 21,000 volt, 1500 microfarad, one and a half, nanofarads a piece. It's six nanofarads. Over here, we got a driver going into a flyback, which is just nothing but a piss cutter. We're looking for electrostatics. So what we're going to do, what we're doing here is we're creating electrostatic field. So one field is a positive, one field is a negative here, but they're rotating their fields as well. So how you can do experiments if you do them on your own put a plate underneath put some sand on there and you can see the sand when it lifts itself up to the plate 
uh, when it's charged, it'll release its charge and fall back down, recharge and go back up. Pure evidence there. It's good to have a lot of back knowledge. So what we have here is we're coming out of a, a driver. Right now we're using 12 volts, but this can go up to 30 volts. So we can, do, we can go up, which we will. This is just for you guys to get your head wrapped around here. And then we'll jump over to here and that's the schematics pretty much for this. Um, you same got the same capacitance. I figured let's match the capacitance so we're dealing with oscillating uh, the same frequency. So when I fire this up, you'll hear the frequency of the transformer and it's fixed based on how far apart I have it over here. There is no frequency. I do have a separate little um, um, spark gap for it, but we're not going to do it in this uh, demonstration because it does a, a lot of different stuff to the setup, and uh, we need to go over that another time. And uh, right now we'll do it without that. So basically we're just creating electrostatic field in, in this section of these two aluminum plates and then we're doing a electromagnetic swapping high voltage high tension and high speed we're going from 60 hertz and we're going to step it up through the frequency now you'll notice in this this experiment i'm going to take my chicken stick and i'm going to come across and act like if i did have my spark app hooked up and i'm going to come across and you're going to hear Hopefully you can hear on that end, but you're going to hear that I'm going to start to match the frequency. When the frequency is matched from here to the transformer action over there, you're going to start to see the ball raise up. You're going to see this ball. You see how it's sitting in the middle right now? All right. You'll see it raise up. And uh, this is awesome experiment. I'm excited about it because it brings Ed Lee Scallant totally into levitation. So let's go back here over to, I had put this up in a video a long time ago. It's pretty much using Ed's wheel back in Ed's time. He's doing transformer action. Every time he has his magnetic field uh, going by, they're swapping their poles. They're doing the AC transformer action on the PMHs. That's going to the capacitors that come out of the capacitors. I'm going to one end of the cone and the other end of the cone. And then I'm going back on the other capacitor to the one end of the cone and the other end of the cone. And what we're doing is we're snapping together um, the same, the, the same, we're snapping together the same, we're snapping together both sides of these capacitors. So basically this uh, six nanofarad and this nanofarad is going off simultaneously. Once I get the spark gap over here, you'll notice it in tune to that gap. This is why I don't want to get into the other because it's, it's perfect, but this is a way to show you how I got there. So when I match the frequencies, you start to see, like I said, this go up, but you'll also we'll notice that that it creates a scalar wave because what we're doing is we're banging together out of phase, out of phase. We're, we're banging together two separate now this is electrostatic. So this is making electrostatic field going horizontal, okay? But it's swapping its poles. And then you have a vertical, which is this one, doing its high tension, okay? And it's swapping. Think about what's happening here. So all of a sudden, once you have them banging at the same time, there's a force that causes this ball to come up. Let's go ahead and fire this up. So we're going to fire up first right there. So we have the electrostatic. Look, 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 you can see it already lifted up. Hold on here. Holy shit. Let's push it back down. All right, so push back down. It's even. 
So we're gonna put the electrostatics on. And we got the electrostatics on. Now how do we even know it's on? You don't even hear it. Remember I said I didn't have the spark gap hooked up? This is how we know how much power we got here. We got, we got a lot, a lot of electrostatic going on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and let's hit on the transformer action. Now the transformer action is happening. There's the spark gap. Now remember you got six nanofarads, six nano and nanofarads, but they're firing at different speeds right now. Now this over here, the driver is firing, I believe in like in megahertz. So it's going fast. But if we take, now listen, as I do this, you listen to that spark out. Watch the ball. guys it's hard to hold this and do it and you want to get that spark gap and this gap at the same time So it's about tuning the two fields. And uh, if you're asking why are we doing this? Because I believe that the matter itself, the crystal, whether it's rock crystal, whatever you have there, is gonna have a, um, a cymatic. And in that cymatic is what we're gonna tune to until all of a sudden the crystal itself starts vibrating the ether around it. And let's get this system off right now. And I want you to see how much, there should be some spark left in here. Oh yeah, some left in here maybe. Sure. Um, now, Dr. Korsky and the experiment done after Dr. Korsky. Dr. Korsky was 1917. The experiment done was 1927 to where they showed that um, you'll have to increase weights on the back here uh, in order. Um, no, you'll have to take weight off because this, according to the experiment, will would levitate. And um, as it goes up, um, will want to start adding weight, I guess, to the front of it because it'll pull the weight up. It was known to uh, pull 40 pounds and the crystal itself became opaque and it also expanded over 20 times its size. Now, um, I may have to make some changes, alterations, get there. I don't know. This is just ex exciting. I, I realized working before on my experiment that I did on the first set of videos i was using two of these and basically they're piss cutters but it's good for the purpose of making electrostatic and then because i'm banging you know these uh capacitors and we're stepping it up with a uh, a um, cool little piss cutter here these are the come come out of the old tvs um so you step it up in voltage. This is like, uh, uh, heck, I'm gonna say 15, 30,000 volts, maybe 30,000. Pretty good, uh, but it's a piss cutter. There's, so jumping them into the capacitance and coming out and creating an electrostatic field in, in place. 
you can see, look, the ball is already up on its own. I mean, I didn't touch it. So it started in the middle. Now it's just sitting up on its own. Um, interesting experiment. And the coalition between Dr. Korsky's experiment and the boys after it in 1927, and then uh, Ed Lee Scallon uh, with moving from one location to the other and being able to levitate rocks supposedly, um, whether he did or didn't, is not my place to prove, but it's my time to see if I could do it. So I just wanna leave you guys with that. And uh, yeah, we got the weekend off. So I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, have coffee, um, start recording tomorrow, turn it on, leave it on. And I'm going to hook up the other capacitor or the other um, spark app. And I'm going to tune the spark apps together. And I got uh, two frequency generators and two, what they are also is counters. And I will uh, look at and tune them to be the same frequency, regardless of what they are. And we will um, try to create cymatics. In between the alternating high tension, high frequency waves going vertically and the electrostatic alternating wave in the middle. We'll see how it makes this quartz crystal react. So you can see right now it's clear. And as we start to do the experiment, I expect it to be starting to turn opaque. Peace out, my bro hams. Look at where it's sitting right now. It's sitting up high. Peace out. Leave your comments.